Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where I'm coming to you from indoors today. Really cold outside, not a really good day to go to the park and also I'm quite busy. I have a lot of uh, cameras which I'm shipping today. I've got about half of them ready and boxed and I still have the other half which I have to get ready by uh, 5 o'clock which is when the shipping company comes to pick them up. So uh, quite a busy time and pretty much every day this week has been busy. Uh, a lot of orders. Uh, for those of you who've been buying cameras from me, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy them when you receive them. Uh, the weekend last week was quite uh, interesting. Uh, we decided to go to have dinner with uh, some friends of ours in uh, Chinatown district of Yokohama. Uh, our friends are from China and have lived uh, in Japan for a number of years and uh, you know, they're really nice people and they wanted to take us to uh, I guess authentic Chinese restaurant in the Chinatown area so we drove out there and uh, we got there uh, quite early so we could kind of walk around and sightsee and then enjoy the shops and things like that and it's a nice place uh, compared to I guess the Chinatown districts and other places the one here in Yokohama is uh, very clean and safe and has a lot of uh, interesting things and very good food uh, some people might think it's a little bit too touristy and not authentic, but I don't think you can find much of an authentic Chinatown unless you're somewhere in China. Uh, supposedly there's another one located uh, near Ikebukuro or in the Ikebukuro area in Tokyo, out west of us, but uh, I haven't had a chance to visit there yet. But uh, after having a wonderful meal in Yokohama, uh, I think we'll go ahead and head out to Ikebukuro and see if we can't find something uh, interesting to see and do there. Anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, subject of today's video, and that is going to be the Yashica Electro 35 FC, which means flash control camera. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the camera here, and the uh, box for this camera is in quite beautiful condition. Uh, over the years I've come across uh, quite a few boxed cameras uh, from back in the day. And I think about maybe four or five of these uh, Yashica cameras I've come across still new in the box. Uh, some are better than others. Uh, some of these uh, cameras have been in their original boxes for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. And usually the boxes are in quite bad condition. And often the cameras inside are just in bad condition as the box. Uh, but fortunately this one seems to have been uh, stored carefully and not had anything sat on it or whatever. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. So go ahead and uh, pop open the top here. And right on the top here we have the uh, instruction manual. And quite interesting to see this. Um, uh, I see that they, this camera came in both the silver and black version. Oddly, uh, here in Japan I've never actually seen a black example of one of these cameras. The silver ones are you see them. The FC is not really a common camera. Uh, I don't see a large number of these. Maybe one in every 50 electro cameras I see is an FC. Uh, they, they didn't sell a whole lot of these. By the time this camera came out, people had moved on to uh, SLR cameras and weren't so much interested in rangefinder cameras anymore. Uh, but yeah, I've never seen a black one. Maybe uh, if any of you out there have a black one, uh, maybe you can tell me a little bit about it or if you see them uh, in, in your country from time to time. Uh, in the back here we have a really nice thing here, a nice uh, accessory. This is a guidebook for the Yashica Electro series. Uh, and on the inside here, ah, we have the Electro 35 CCN, the Electro 35 MC. And let's see. Of course we have the more popular uh, cameras, the most popular, the GSN, and of course uh, this is the GL. By this time, I think the, uh, the the GX had already been discontinued. This shows the accessories and things which you can find for uh, these cameras. I, I do occasionally come across the flash or flash extension cords, so they're kind of rare uh, items. And uh, for the Electro 35s, uh, I do occasionally come across the close-up kits and, and the telephoto kits and things like that, and even the original tripod, which Oddly enough, was actually made in Germany and not in Japan, which was a popular accessory for the Yashica cameras. And let's see what else we have in here. Oh, uh, and here we have the Yashica 124G, which I think was the, the last TLR camera produced in Japan. Uh, quite popular, uh, it, and 
uh, a really good camera. Of the, of the cameras in this book here, the ones, the, the best ones, of course, are the Electro 35 range finders and the 124G, though they do show the uh, Electro AX SLR camera. Uh, I don't really like the SLR cameras uh, Yashica made back in the early 70s. Uh, this is largely because in those days, uh, Japan's economy was going through a tough time. They were suffering from a kind of serious bout of hyperinflation. And uh, the government you know, was, and business were having a kind of difficult time getting a hold of the economy. This happened before the inflation hit. Uh, America and other places. It hit Japan first, and Japan, they dealt it with, with it by simply refusing to print any money for five years. And after the five years had ended, the uh, inflation was under control and has kind of been under control ever since. But because of this uh, uh, hyperinflation, it became really difficult to import quality materials and things like that in J into Japan to make cameras. And so a lot of the stuff made during that time, this is when we see a lot of move to plastic you know, being used in what used to be metal cameras. The Electro 35 uh, rangefinder cameras didn't really suffer from so much from this issue because their tooling and much of their parts had been manufactured in more prosperous times and were higher quality. Uh, so, uh, though the the TL, I mean the SLR cameras of the early 70s, I don't really like very much. Uh, the rangefinder cameras, the GSN, of course, is a superlative camera. The GTN, the GX, the GL, the CCN, and even the FC is a very high quality camera. And uh, it also has the distinction, I think, of being the last of the Electro 35 uh, cameras with a uh, metal covers on the top and bottom. But anyway, let's go ahead and look further inside the box. And we'll go ahead and take off the. Oh wow, we still have the original neck strap here, still wrapped in plastic. Uh, that's really interesting. Problem with these neck straps is over the years, if they're stored in poor conditions, the chemicals inside separate and kind of migrate to the surface, and they have this like kind of greasy, sticky feeling, which I, I really hate. And it gets stuck to your skin and on the cameras and stuff like that. So uh, I usually just cut them off and throw them away. Uh, this one's nice, still nice and supple and new. Uh, so inside the box we have the camera itself, still in the original plastic, and uh, the styrofoam is still in beautiful shape. So let's go ahead and take a look at the camera itself. And first we'll look at the case. Now the cases on these old Yashikas uh, they're actually a quite high quality case, but depending on how they are stored, sometimes they get this kind of like chalky stuff around the outside if they've been kept inside the plastic or in a case. This chalky stuff can be cleaned off with uh, uh, a little soap and water. I used dish soap dil diluted with water with a, a toothbrush and then wipe it off with a clean cloth. And usually it looks really good again after that. The good thing about these cameras, or the camera cases in the old Yashikas, is they always have a tripod socket on the bottom. So you can use this camera on a tripod without taking it out of the case. Uh, this is kind of good because it seems like the, the time you're most likely to drop a, a camera is when you're putting it on or taking it off the tripod and you don't have it on the, you know, you're not using the next strap. And you know, that's, that tends to be uh, the most dangerous time. Opening it up, where well, we have a very beautiful camera here. It's completely immaculate, not a mark on it. Of course, it should be. It's a new camera. No one has used it before. Let's go ahead and take it out of the case. And we'll go ahead and remove the lens cap. And here you see a, a basic Yashica Electro 35 camera of the early 1970s. It pretty much operates the, the same way as the, uh, all the other versions of the Electro 35. The only difference between this one and the other ones is that it has a, a kind of improved system for the self-timer. It has automatic flash control if you're using a uh, dedicated Yashica flash. And an odd thing is that it comes with a uh, f2.8 lens. It's actually a more sophisticated 40 millimeter f2.8. It's better than the ones which they put in the later cameras like the Yashica Snap or Diary or things like that. And these were just kind of common lenses made by one company which were given to pretty much all the Japanese camera manufacturers and used in most of the point and shoot cameras of the 70s and early 80s. Uh, this was still a, a more, you know, a Yashica engineered lens and engineered and manufactured in a high quality lens. 
and as this camera was designed to uh, be easily used with a flash. You didn't really need uh, a wide f1.7 aperture lens like you would find in the other cameras. And the f1.7 aperture isn't something you use very commonly in these cameras, uh, largely because uh, the maximum shutter speed is like 1 250th one of a second, which isn't really uh, fast enough to be able to shoot at wide apertures in any kind of light. So uh, generally when I'm shooting with rangefinder cameras, I, I like to have good depth of field and have everything sharp. So we usually shoot it around f8 or so. Uh, or f5.6 or f11 depending uh, on how bright it is outside. Uh, so yeah, the f2.8 lens in this uh, camera is perfectly adequate. Uh, this uses the regular 54 millimeter push on hood which means on the inside if you're using the clip on or thread on filters it would need a 52 millimeter. So if you want to use filters on this camera, and you can easily because the uh, light meter eye is located on the inside here, I just screw them on. Uh, 52 millimeter is one of the most common sizes. It was the standard size for uh, Nikon cameras. Uh, their, their main lenses, the 50 millimeter, 28 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and such, all use the 52 millimeter uh, a cap. So you can easily find aftermarket accessory caps, hoods, and things like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the camera. Uh, starting at the top here, uh, most of it looks like an ordinary uh, Yashica Electro 35. Uh, we have the standard uh, rewind knob, which is the same you find on the other cameras. We have this uh, hot shoe, and as I said, this camera uses the uh, uh, dedicated flash. We can use an, a more modern strobe flash with it, just follow the directions on the flash. If you're using a, an old vintage flash gun, which some people still do, believe it or not, you can plug in the cord uh, to the flash here in the socket on the side. Here we have the over and under lamps. Uh, it says slow and over. Uh, the slow lamp means that you've selected an aperture and the shutter is going to fire at uh, 1 30th of a second or slower. And so you, you either have to hold the camera more steady when this light uh, lights up or uh, switch to a larger aperture. Uh, this camera will fire at very long shutter speeds uh, if the lens is stopped down 30 seconds or one minute. I'm not exactly, it, it varied a little bit. Some cameras were 30 seconds, some were 60 seconds, and some seem to go on indefinitely. So uh, you don't have to worry about not being able to take a picture if this light comes on. You just have to be have the, the camera on a tripod or hold it very, very steadily. Uh, the over light illuminates when you depress the shutter button part way. And if that uh, lights up, it means that your aperture is set wide enough that uh, the shutter speed can't fire fast enough to catch a properly exposed image. Uh, so you, uh, you need to uh, stop down uh, the aperture one or two stops until this light goes out. If you're looking through the viewfinder on the inside, there are another set of lights on the inside, so you can see the over or slow and over lights as you're looking through the viewfinder. So you don't have to like look at the top of the camera when you're trying to figure out if the settings are right. Over here we have the shutter release button, which accepts a standard uh, cord, a standard cable release. Uh, then we have uh, a lock button, which uh, and prevents you from accidentally discharging the shutter if you have it cocked. Here we have the uh, film counter dial, and of course here we have the... Uh, wow, the sound of a new camera. Really, really cool. Very, very smooth. Almost no effort at all. Uh, maybe lighter than a Leica camera. But, um, kind of a very distinct uh, clack there when the shutter is fired. It kind of softens up as the camera breaks in and you use it more often. On the back of the camera, we have the battery check lamp. And when you push the battery check lamp, this light on the front lights up. Not the, the not here in the uh, film counter dial like in some of the other cameras or in a battery check lamp area, which you know, usually is in the film counter that the light lights up. But in this case, it's going to be on the front. And we have the viewfinder window here. Uh, like the other Electro 35 cameras, the Yashica has a really high contrast rangefinder viewfinder system which makes it easier to focus in, in most conditions. Moving to the bottom of the camera, we have the release button for uh, releasing the winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. Over here, we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket. A little bit of discoloration there from being in the case for, I don't know, 40 some years. Uh, this is the battery cover here. Uh, nice and pristine on the inside. Uh, this camera was designed to use, I guess, the HM9 battery, uh, 
uh, Mercury 1.3 volt battery. Uh, you can use LR44 batteries with adapters. Uh, you can use the same adapters which are used on the uh, Yashica GX. And if you don't have those, you can simply use metal or foil spacers. You just make sure that you line up the battery so the polarity matches what is shown in the sticker in the bottom and you can just wedge tin foil or old nuts or things like that on one side until you have a good contact. And uh, just make sure that it doesn't shake around or move around too much and then you can at least operate the camera until you can get the proper adapters for it. Uh, the front of the camera has of course the important stuff on it. Uh, we have the a focusing ring, which oddly on this camera is located in the in the front. Uh, on the Ashikas, it's usually the opposite. Usually, the focusing ring is on the back, and the aperture ring is on the front. They kind of uh, reversed the design here, and I think this kind of like a, uh, as their uh, engineering was moving on to new things. Um, uh, they use a system like what was used in, say, the Snap or uh, MF or Diary or later cameras. Uh, we have a. Uh, when we're focusing here, we have a simple diagram to use. This is a rangefinder camera, but it also has the uh, uh, guide here to allow you to uh, look at the focus without looking through the viewfinder. It's a really fe handy feature if you like street or candid photography. And you can focus the camera without actually looking at someone, and then you can just lift it up and focus, you know, just compose and shoot. Uh, on this side here, we have the dial where you set. Uh, this is for the uh, gain or excuse me the numbers for setting the uh, what do they call that uh, the guide numbers for using the flash uh, this is uh, as I said a, a camera with an automatic flash system and so uh, this is a much more uh, sophisticated system than comes on the other Yashica Electro 35 rangefinder cameras and the film speed setting we have located on the bottom here and we have a range of ASA 25 all the way up to 800 uh, and of course here we have the uh, CDS light meter cell I. So uh, this camera here, as I said, this is new in the box. I'll be uh, listing this as soon as I, uh, as I get it cleaned up. Uh, one problem with these new cameras is it, they always need a fair amount of work because even though they haven't been used, and you can see this is very pristine on the inside, the things like the, the light seals get soft and sticky over time and haze uh, accumulates in the viewfinder. The haze doesn't come from dust or dirt. It comes from the gassing out of the softer materials in the camera, the wires and insulators and even the light seals. And as this gasses out, it uh, attaches to the, the optics and such. So normally uh, on these cameras, even though they are new, I have to replace the light seals. I have to clean out the viewfinder and often I have to clean out the lens as well. Though this one looks like the, the lens is, is quite clean. Uh, so uh, as soon as I have it ready, I'll go ahead and have it uh, listed ready for sale. But anyway, uh, that's it for my video and unboxing of the Yashica Electro, Th Electro 35 FC rangefinder camera. I plan to be posting uh, more videos soon as I get more cameras. Uh, if you'd like to buy this camera, uh, please visit one of my online stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. If you'd like to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please click the like button. That always helps. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.